Well, in a new statement from President Biden, the special counsel released today its findings about its look into my handling of classified documents. I was pleased to see they reached the conclusion I believed all along they would reach that there would be no charges brought in this case and the matter is now closed. Okay, let's bring in our panel. Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor. Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel. And Mark Thiessen, Enterprise Institute senior, American Enterprise Institute senior fellow. All our Fox News contributors. Andy, I think we should start with you again because we, we started with you the last time. You've kind of heard this conversation going on now for the past 45, 50 minutes. What do you make? Have you changed your assessment of anything on these classified documents, charges not being filed, and, and the release of, quite frankly, a, a ton of embarrassing information. Yeah, well, I guess my, my first impression was that, um, you know, this is supposed to be about whether there's enough evidence to indict. And as you read the report, I can't help but say it sure looks like there's enough here to invoke the 25th Amendment. Um, and I know that's not what, you know, what he's looking at, what he, his purpose is. But, right. you know, his fitness for office is a major issue here. Second thing, you know, we've mentioned this a number of times, Trace. Um, one of the reasons, it seems like one of the core reasons that he didn't indict is because he decided, and he says this himself, a jury would find him to be a sympathetic defendant mm -hmm. because of his, uh, you know, he's, he's a gracious enough guy, but, you know, he's forgetful, et cetera. If you're at the point of saying what a jury would assess, what that means is you've drawn the conclusion that there is enough evidence to indict the person and enough evidence perhaps to let the jury decide the case. And what you're now down to is, did mm -hmm. he have the intent to break the law or not? And that brings me to the third point, which is President Trump is charged under the Espionage mm -hmm. Act. That's, number, that's uh, Section 793 of the Criminal Code. Subsection F, the... the mental element that you as a prosecutor have to prove to make an offense under that uh, statute is not willfulness. It's gross negligence. So yeah. I, I really don't understand how the fumbling, bumbling aspect of all this helps him, because if the jury even merely believed that he was grossly negligent, that would be enough to convict. Yeah, it's a good pivot to you, Saul Weisenberg, because, you know, Andy brings up a very good point is, is they're, they're, they're projecting, saying, listen, this is what a jury would do. It kind of reminds me of the James Comey speech when it came out for Hillary Clinton's documents saying, well, she made some bad decisions. But, you know, just projecting of what would happen had this thing gone to trial. Nobody knows what's going to happen had this gone to trial. And if there is enough evidence for you to consider that this might go to trial, maybe there's an argument that it should go to trial. Well, first of all, there's absolutely no truth to the rumor that this report was ghostwritten by Gavin Newsom and his future <laughs> campaign manager. I just want to put that rumor to rest. That's, that's number one. Number two, uh, Andy keyed in on, on the real point here. Remember, from what you are reporting, uh, the, the report says, her, her says, that uh, he did willfully keep and retain these documents. That is a very high standard. I assume in this context, it means that he knew he was doing it in violation of the law. At a minimum, it was deliberate. Andy can probably tell us that. And so uh, whatever his mental state is now, uh, that, that's very serious. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, her found himself, the special counsel, uh, they're always in unenviable positions. Somebody's are always going to be disappointed. So in the one hand, he's saying we're not going to bring charges. He can anyway because he's the acting. Uh, Biden is the president, so you can't charge a sitting president. And we're not going to charge him because uh, he'd be a sympathetic old man. But man, it is really, really damaging, damaging yeah. to the president. It's very politically damaging. Mark Thiessen, I know you have something that you would like to read in this yeah. report. So, so please go ahead. Yeah, no. So, I mean, one of the most devastating thing is on page 248, where it says, Mr. Biden's apparent lapses and failures in February and April 2017 likely appear consistent with the diminished faculties and faulty memory he shows in the Zawinster interview and in our interview of him. Therefore, we conclude the evidence is not established that Biden willfully disclosed national defense information, Mr. Zawinster. Diminished faculties. 
They, 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 so what we're, why this is so devastating, and it's not necessarily devastating legally, I'll leave that to Andy and, and, and the rest of the panel to discuss. It's de devastating politically because what it has done is it has lifted the veil showing the mm -hmm. American people what Joe Biden is behind closed doors. What is his mental fact? He goes out and he stumbles in a press conference and they and they pull the they pull they, they pull the, the rope on him and pull him back in. They can avoid a Super Bowl interview. You can't avoid an interview with the special counsel. If you sit down with a world leader and you and you deliver a word salad out of diplomatic concern for their relation with the United States, they're never going to expose that to, to to the world. But the special counsel has now shown us what he is like trying to conduct a meeting about mm -hmm. substantive issues, and he can't do it. He can't remember who, what the arguments were. He can't remember who the players were. He can't remember who was arguing for, who was arguing against. And they conclude that he has diminished faculties. That is, that, that is going to be the closing ad of any presidential mm -hmm. campaign uh, going in, into the fall. We can't have a president with diminished faculties who can't yeah, remember which, basic facts and basic names. That, this is, this is absolutely devastating to his re-election campaign. In fact, Democrats ought to look at this and start thinking maybe we need another candidate. Yeah, well, it brings, that, it brings it back to Andy's 25th argument right there. You know, it's one of those things where we heard a yeah. lot about that during former President Trump's tenure in office. And it seems to me, Andy, we have yeah. had none of that now. And, and who knows if that becomes part of the conversation. Yeah, well, there's objectively a lot more reason to worry about it. And I, I don't mean to say that in a demagogic way. We see this president, you know, when we get to see him, uh, and it's always, it's always difficult. Uh, the other thing, the other point I want to make, Trace, is I'm struck with the little I've been able to read through this so far about how concerned they are about exactly what they ought to be concerned about, which is the two tiers of justice and that whole allegation. There's a lot in here that seems to rationalize why we're not charging when President Trump has been charged. And the argument comes down to Trump was co-op, uh, mm -hmm. Biden was cooperative with the investigators, but Trump wasn't. That is not a justification for handling the classified documents and national defense information charges differently. What that would be a justification mm -hmm. for is, okay, charge Trump with obstructing the grand jury. If that's what, if that's what bothers you about what his behavior was, then mm -hmm. fine. Get rid of all the classified document stuff and deal with the grand jury obstruction. But what they're saying here is because they say that one guy was cooperative and one guy wasn't, we're going to completely throw the book, including all of the classified documents counts, at Trump, mm -hmm. and we're going to look the way with Biden because he's a little bit forgetful and old. Yeah, and I think it really does. I mean, I've got about two minutes left. I want to get you both in, Saul and Mark, but it's the, the thou doth protest too much argument, Saul, here, which brings up a very valid point. You know, all I can say is this is really, this is, again, I, uh, I also haven't read the report. I've just read snippets. But this, this is really astonishing to have these kinds of uh, extrajudicial or extra prosecutorial statements in the report. Now, I know they're in there to show uh, allegedly why they'd have trouble prosecuting President Biden, but it, it, it's, really, it's really striking, and it's going to make it much easier for somebody to mount uh, a challenge to him. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of twofold here, Mark Thiessen, because w what's happening is you have this 345-page report, which goes to great lengths to show why President Biden does not belong in a courtroom, but it also goes to great lengths to kind of illustrate why maybe President Biden shouldn't belong in the Oval Office. No, 100 percent. Just another quote. From the, from, the, from the report, page 207. Biden's memory also appeared to have significant limitations both at the time he spoke to Zawinster in 2017 and our recorded conversations. He was often painfully slow with Mr. Biden struggling to remember events and straining at times to read and relay his own notebook entries. This, this is the commander in chief. There's a war going on in Europe. There's a war going on in the Middle East. There's a possibility of a war in Asia over Taiwan. And the president, the, the commander in chief, struggled to read his own notebook entries in a meeting with the special counsel. What is, I mean, truly, Andy's right. This is a, this is 25th Amendment evidence. I mean, this, this, this man should not be president of the United States.
Yeah, well, you can uh, you can bet that the Trump campaign will certainly uh, have that argument again and again. Andy McCarthy, Saul Weisenberg, Mark Thiessen, thank you all for your time. We should note, you can see the, the boxes there on the right-hand side of the screen. We've been talking about the special counsel deciding there will be no charges against the president for holding classified documents in his Delaware home, but the report is damning otherwise. Hey, everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.